Welcome to Stellenbosch Egg Design. So, welcome to Stellenbosch. Welcome to Stellenbosch. Bienvenue à Stellenbosch University. Bienvenue à la Faculté d'Agri Science. Bienvenue au département d'économie agricole. Welcome to Stellenbosch University. Welcome to the Agri Faculteit. And a special welcome as you hear from the students. Based at Department of Campus. Welcome to Stellenbosch Agri Science. Welcome to the Department of Agriculture Economics. Welcome to Stellenbosch, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Stellenbosch University and welcome to the Faculty of Agricultural Economics. Welcome to Stellenbosch, your home away from home. <laughs>in wat kan ik zien? Baie welkom. Welcome and welcome to Stellenbosch University. Welcome to the Faculty of Agri Sciences. We really cannot wait to meet and greet you in 2024 and we hope that you are just as excited as we are for the journey that you're going to embark on. Um you, so what do I say? <laughs> we are just as uh, nervous as you are about your matric exam. Um so we um yeah, I have a program, Marty's 101, and this is specifically to put you at ease to answer some of the questions that you might have, uh, that we think, um, frequently asked questions that we get, and so sit back and enjoy this program with us. A quick rundown of the program, how it's going to work, is I've invited two students to join me at the table tonight. Then from the students, we're going to jump over to industry. Then we're going to go back and give you some program information, just some snippets. And then we're going to end off the program with our faculty administrator, Mr. Eric van Sel, tying all the loose ends together and uh, answer all your questions. Um, just a quick disclaimer, you've already seen it when you, if you did um, look at it, and that is that um, we are not professional actors. We are actually very uncomfortable in the seats that we are sitting at the moment. This is not our daytime job. We didn't go for professional makeup. We didn't go for media um, planning or uh, training. So um, we're going to make mistakes and we invite you to laugh with us about them. Um, so let's just, um, for, because since it is a program that we want to address your questions, you are more than welcome to WhatsApp us all your questions. Um, you will find the number on the screen there. And if you do listen to this recording uh, on some other time, then you're more than welcome to send us an email at a Greek um, at sun.ac.za. That is A G R I C at sun, S U N, dot A C dot Z A. So let me jump in and I'm going to, um, yes, this is Oleander and Hannes. Hannes, I'm going to start with you. You are a first year student. So I just want to know is Stellenbosch what you expected? Well, uh, uh, thank you very much to be here tonight. Um, it's a big opportunity. And um, Stellenbosch is really a is beyond the, the measurements and thoughts that I thought it would, was going to be. But at least I know um, what I came here for. Um, it, 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 it was beyond my expectations. So, yeah, it was really... Was it better or is, it, or it, is it more or is it worse? <laughs> Stellenbosch gives you the best of everything. So sometimes you get uh, introduced to something that you're not used to, but According to the faculty and the uh, learning and the education, it's really, really better and it's good. And I'm so pleasant to, to study what I am and to be here at the uh, university. Is, it, is, it, um, is university studies difficult? How are you finding it? Uh, just perhaps for the audience, just to say that Hannes was last year in matric. He was exactly where you are right now, worried about his matric exam. And now he's a first year student at Stellenbosch studying plant and soil sciences. Um, yes, uh, the, um, uh, the education is really, um, uh, excuse my English, mm -hmm. I'm also Afrikaans student. So it was really an exception for the studies and to, um, to, I'll say, for the academics to, um, it's, it's different. It's a lot harder than uh, matric, but also to um, occupy with all the different things and stuff. So it's hard work and just to keep on going, but hard work pays off. So therefore, um, it, it, is, it gets better when you, when you work hard. So, Olea from my side. Yeah, Oleander, you've been here at the university for quite some time. I first want to know, you hail from Zimbabwe. Yes, that's um, correct. Why Stellenbosch? Why Agri-Sciences? 
Um, with me, when I was young, my grandparents used to go to the farm all the time, so we would have to go with them. And it was always interesting what we would do there. So when I was in grade 12, I wondered, I was like, what, are, what other opportunities are there in agri-science? Is it only about farming? So I did my research actually, and I found out that there are many different aspects that agriculture touches, like uh, soil sciences, food science, animal science, and the fact that it's a broad thing. So um, it also focuses on food insecurity and touches many aspects. And I love science. So agri-science is not only about farming, it also had like some of my favorite subjects like maths, physics, chemistry, so it was quite interesting. Well, Leander, I'm so glad that you touch on that because yes, if you do um, agri-sciences, you start, most of the students start with a BSc, a Greek, in, and then you have subjects like chemistry, physics, mathematics, and you sit in exactly the same classes as the natural sciences students. And it's only as you progress in your program where you take additional subjects uh, that is specific to the agricultural sector. Can I perhaps ask you, um, coming from Zimbabwe, it must have been difficult to, to adapt to Stellenbosch, the environment being very far from home. Um, yeah. How did you experience it and any tips for the students on what they can do to prepare themselves? Yes, that is true. It was quite a challenge to adapt, especially the weather. <laughs> so Stellenbosch weather is quite unpredictable, uh, cold than where I'm from. So that was also a challenge adapting to the weather. But also being far away from home, I was very homesick for quite a while. So I would video call almost every day home and speak to them. But then after a while, once I settled in, I made friends, I think I was able to get over the homesickness. I think perhaps we should just say to all the students that we're not going to touch on residences tonight. Uh, that is not, uh, but Oleanda and myself, we did go to the best ladies' residence on campus, and that is Narina. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but then again, it's not really that it's the best university. For us, it was the best university. How was residence, or how is residence? Um, res. Res is actually very, fa very fun, <laughs> if I would say. Um, there are many opportunities you have in Res, like making friends. Um, I would say it is advisable to be there during orientation week, especially in Res, because that is when everyone in Res first years are open to making friends. Um, there are many different functions that also the people in Res create for you. So you also get to know about Stellenbosch, they give you a tour. So I would say Res is actually very cool. Mm. Perhaps I can ask Hannes because um, Hannes is also in residence. Um, without divulging too much of the information of what really happens in the residences, um, was it tough to adjust to the rhythm in residence? Well, I thought um, because I was in residence at high school, I thought that with the adaption wouldn't be that difficult. But when you go to a more mature stage of your life and out of high school, there's different norms and values and rules that, um, that you have to apply for yourself and for the people around you. So for me especially, I've, I had struggled a lot to find my feet. But at the end, um, time learns. You make new friends and you learn to, um, to deal with a lot of uh, things that happen, a lot of different people, and I've met so many different people that helped me a lot through, through the residence and my life in Stellenbosch. So that was quite nice. I think perhaps if I may add is that for students, you don't have to be in residence to be part of the university setup. I mean, we're a town, um, there are 28 or 30,000 students in town. You are bound to meet somebody that is just as crazy as you or just as normal as you and have the same interests. We've got 65 different societies on campus that you can join. Please don't join all of them because you are here to study, but you would be able to make friends. And private students, the minority of the students actually go into residence and most of the students are private students that stay um, in decks or in private res or in houses or uh, flat um, on campus campus, so that's fine. Uliander, what is the nicest thing about Stellenbosch? Um, I love the environment. It's very different from where I come from. Like there's trees all around. And also I would say the people in Stellenbosch, everyone is nice. Because when I came here, I was quite scared and a bit intimidated. 
But as I got to know Stellenbosch and the people around, I got to see that it's very nice. Everyone is very nice here. And Hannes, do you uh, only study or do you have a balanced life? Do you do other things other than just going to class? Well, yeah, when you st start to um, get everything under control, uh, what I mean by that is your academics and your, your education. When your academics are on track and you are at ease, all the other uh, things uh, fall in place. So to, for your own um, balance and, and life, it's really, really nice at Stellenbosch because it gives you a platform of so many possibilities and opportunities. So um, I like to, to have a definite uh, study program. And between my breaks, that's what your day makes better at Stellenbosch. It's the sport you do between your breaks. It's the kneels here where you go buy a coffee or see someone else. Or sometimes there's, um, at the evenings when you study late, there's always a dance or a soki or a something nice. Or sometimes just a, a quiet night um, with a few friends. It's, it's always nice. Um, but I, I would definitely say a balanced life between um, dances and sport, academics and friends and um, of your spiritual life um, on weekends. It's the balance um, depends on your choice. But I'll definitely say in Stellenbosch, there's enough opportunities um, and possibilities that, that can help you to have a balanced, good life. Yeah, I agree. That, I mean, you, you don't only come to Stellenbosch just to study. You come to Stellenbosch to form a network of friends as well. And um, it's important to go to class, very important to go to class and go to prepare to class, but you should also enjoy the other things. Do you agree, Oleander? I very much agree. So what is the nicest things that you do? What do you love doing except enjoying the environment? Okay, in my free time, I love hanging out with my friends. Um, also hiking, there are lots of places you can hike in Stellenbosch. Uh, and also just walking around town. It's a very pretty, especially at night, I would say the town looks very pretty at night. Ah, now you're touching on something. <laughs> Hannes, I'm going to put you in the corner there. <laughs> Once again, you don't have to divulge information, but how do you experience it um, going out? Is there advice for students what they should do and what they shouldn't do if they do go out at night? Well, that is uh, quite on the spot, and I can I can rely on it um, out of a personal uh, experience, and therefore I can say that the campus itself and Stellenbosch is really really uh, safe and um, trusted environment. There are a lot of um, co co communities uh, and societies of um, security and the police and the campus security that really makes it. Um, uh, available for you to, to walk at night. I mean, to walk from the campus itself to the, your residence or your flat, there are a lot of um, uh, security um, guards that can walk with you. There are um, vehicles, uh, um, Ubers, and a lot of uh, shuttles, campus shuttles that can help you. But one of my advice that I'll say is, um, in the orientation week, there, there will be a lot of people that um, give you advice and I, I'll, my advice is to listen to them. Uh, stay together, be safe, don't walk alone um, and don't be afraid. Go out and enjoy life but be safe and be accountable for each other and for yourself. And um, Go and enjoy life but be aware, be alert and stay safe. Mm. That's very good advice. Thank you very much, Hannes. Well, Leander, any last words of encouragement perhaps for our matriculants planning on studying next year here? Yes, I would like to say um, it is crucial that you also make friends with not only people in your races or PSOs, but also people in your classes. Because when things get difficult, you are going to need them and you will work together to figure out what's happening. So I would say it is, and also to create um, a a structure, a stable structure, to have discipline whereby you not only have um, fun but also include your academics as well, so that you have like a balanced life. And also, sorry, <laughs> do not be afraid of failing, because in university, yes, you may fail, but once you fail, you need to get up and also do your best. Just don't give up. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. This is such wise words, and I'm, I'm so glad that I invited you to sit around the table. Now, Hannes and Oleander, they are only two students, so let's hear what some other students are saying, why they are studying agri-sciences and why they love coming to Stellenbosch University. I think a lot of people think agri-science is just like, oh, do you want to become a farmer? No, it's an applied science. You learn so much and you learn how to work with people. You learn the science behind how farming works. Agriculture is so much more than just farming. If you're into anything agriculture, from wine to animals to citrus to fruit, come join our faculty, there will be a place for you. If you have a love for agriculture and science, it is literally the best combination that you can have. Our food science faculty has just been rated the top one in a hundred by the Shanghai Academic um, World Ranking of World Colleges. Honestly, I'm in Stellenbosch because the hiss, the people, the love, everything, I'm telling you, is such an amazing place to be, so please do come. Food is so important and that's why agri-science is so awesome. Agri-sciences gives you the best future. It opens up your world to a lot of possibilities. There's hope for the future and that's something that agri-science has shown. We are waiting for you to guide you through every day. Uh, we're excited to see you guys in Stellenbosch here. Agri-sciences will take you places you've never been before. Agri-sciences has got a place for everyone. And we can't wait to see you here. Come study at Agri-science at Stellenbosch University. Okay, so we heard from students why they love agri-sciences and why they come to Stellenbosch University. And I want to jump straight into industry. And I've invited uh, Jean de Vol, Dr. Jean de Vol. Um, she has an interesting story, Jean. <laughs> um, she thought that she's going to study viticulture and oenology, <laughs> then literally jumped the queue when she had to register. And in the end, she ended with a PhD in entomology. Thank you very much for joining, John. <laughs> I actually just want to know, because I know a lot of parents ask me that very often, is there work out there? Should a student go and study agri-sciences? Yeah, will they get a job? For sure. So, um, I think as with any career direction, um, you have to pursue success. So, you have to work hard um, to get there, and um, you have to get, have good goals, clear goals, and um, arm yourself with um, professional documents, get the right qualification, make sure you have a good CV, and at the end of the day, you have to sell yourself to industry. And, um, but if you work hard and um, you will achieve success, you will get noticed. And um, I think from there, moving forward, once you get a, a job opportunity, um, it's all about your output and contributing to, to industry. And that, of course, will, ensure um, job security for, for yourself. So for sure, there are a lot of opportunities out there in agriculture. It's so nice to hear because sometimes we th students might think we just say it because we are the university and we want them to come and study and, and make money out of them. But it's good to know that there's loads of opportunities. Um, what are the biggest challenges at the moment in the industry that you face? Perhaps you can just tell us first what you do in your daytime job. <laughs> so. Um, to start with the second question, I'm a field scientist. Um, I work for a multinational company. Um, I focus on, the, um, on Southern Africa, but I have a global responsibility. Um, so we do product development, so it's a, it's a science-based direction, um, but a lot of contact with industry. And um, as for challenges out there for, for the industry and in my working environment, we sometimes joke that the only constant at the moment is change. Mm. So there's a lot of consumer demands, uh, changing consumer demands. We have climate changing. Um, we have different um, challenges every day. But um, it's all about being adaptable. And as you know, South African farmers are very resilient. South Africans in general are. So um, we, we play the game and we're really committed to ensuring well, food security for, for a growing nation. And um, we have this common goal. And, and I think that's what makes us stick forward and, and achieve success at the end of the day. Yeah, I always say to students that if you go and study within the applied sciences, what you basically do is that you, you impact 
everybody's lives, um, every nation, um, because the problems that we have to address are really serious problems, big problems, and it doesn't matter who created those problems. The fact is that the problems are there, and we need scientists and we need young, bright minds to go and study within the applied sciences to address those problems that, that, that we've created or that somebody has created. You did say to me that you had a very interesting day. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this, uh, what you did today. So in, in agriculture, every day is different and no day is the same. The routine is something we, we, we strive for, <laughs> but it's, it's not there. Um, so today was actually a, a, a formal complaint investigation. That's when a farmer followed the label re recommendation for a specific product um, that he sprayed in a, in a stone filled orchard. The, the result was not what was promised or what was expected. And that's when we call on the big brains and um, that's, that's where I come in and we, um, we go out there. It's almost like a, a crime scene investigation. We have to find out why did this product not perform and um, basically it's a formal investigation. So it's, it, it really, it's a bit of a challenge, but um, it's, it's thrilling, it's exciting and, um, you know, in agriculture, I think nobody's ever in their comfort zone, and, and that's where personal growth also comes from. So, as I said, the, the only constant is change. I will never forget when you were a student, and perhaps I'm giving my age away because I have been here for quite some time, but I can remember that you once said to me that the cool stuff that you see, the equipment on NCIA and CSI, that is the stuff that you are working with. <laughs> yes, no, exactly that. So we um, we make use of, of molecular like um, things. We we work with basic biology, and it's it's amazing. We we're still bringing the basics, and, and we're still dealing with nature. Um, but we definitely use technology wherever we can to to help us better farm and, and better understand what we're doing. Sean, is it still a man's world? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so that is something which has changed um, a lot. And I always say at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what your gender is, what your age is, what your skin color is. Um, it's, it's about giving an answer, bringing forward a, a solution to industry. And um, it's, it's all about your contribution. So um, I think we're long past the point where Fantastic. we worry <laughs> how old or what gender you are. Wonderful. John, looking back at your, when you studied at Stellenbosch University and now knowing uh, with a couple of years of experience in industry, what would you have done differently? Would you have done anything differently? Um, would you have taken extra modules or what, what do you think you would have done yeah, reflecting a little bit back. I think looking back, um, one sometimes doesn't, you don't think about it in the moment. Uh, the people in your class are just like your friends that you go to class with, that you go and have a beer with afterwards. And you, you sometimes forget that in future, those will be either your clients, it, in my case, it's now today my boss, <laughs> one of my fellow students, and um, it's it's important to, to use each other and yes, of course, have fun responsibly, but at the same time, remember, these are your peers moving mm -hmm. forward and, and you guys will have to take hands and, and build up this industry and, you know, take take what, what f other generations have, have provided as the baseline and, and build upon that. So. Yeah, I, I think I would have made more of an effort with, with my classmates, for yeah. sure. I think you touch on something very important, and that is when you do come to Stellenbosch, it is also to form networks with people, people that look differently, that speak a different language, that study something else. Um, because as you say, you, you are of similar age, it might be your boss, it might be your co-worker, and so much the better if you know one another, if you've learned from another, another, one another um, and like one another even better. Yeah. Um, Jean, just coming back to your journey when you started that you hopped a little bit, um, perhaps I want to know, is it okay for a student if they're not 100% sure what they want to study? And do they, do you sort of find your feet the way that you go or is it how, yeah, any advice or tips? <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, um, all of us, uh, we're not fortune tellers, like you don't know, so maybe you'll think that one day I want to be a, 
for example, a field scientist, and once you get to the field, you realize this mm. is just not for me, and, and that's okay. So mm. I didn't, I, I initially thought um, I wanted to become a winemaker, <laughs> and then got completely distracted with what I'm doing now. So it's, it's a ride, it's, mm. a, it's a journey, and also as you go along, you will be exposed to, to other career directions or parts in industry that you didn't even know exist. Mm. So um, it's, it's a ride to, to decide as you go along for sure yeah um, and then just a final question from me because I, I know know it sort of but um, is there any space um, when you study agri-sciences outside of Stellenbosch I almost want to say is there is the bubble bigger than Stellenbosch <laughs> <laughs> well I love a little bubble here in Stellenbosch but no for sure um, I think the whole world has has a common goal in mm. in that it, it's all about food production all of us have to eat so um, uh, crops are being produced all over the world mm -hmm. and because of that we have this common goal there's a lot of interaction happening we learn from each other so uh, if I just look at my career up to now I've been to so many countries visiting different trials and trying to learn from their farmers and at the same time also if, if I can teach them anything then great mm -hmm. so you will have exposure far beyond just Stellenbosch and, and even just in our country. For example, I, I, some of the little towns I didn't even know exist. So a lot of exposure and a lot, a lot of, a lot of um, knowledge exchange happening as well on a global, regional and of course uh, international um, environment for sure. I would love to know how many countries you have visited as part of your work. <laughs> Do you have a number to thumb suck? <laughs> Um, I don't have a number. I have a lot of great memories. Um, I've survived an earthquake in Japan. I've worked on the coastline in, in America. I've been to several countries in Europe and, and also developing countries. And um, I think that was to me probably the most interesting. And um, we're not the only ones facing challenges out there. And it's amazing to see how resilient some of these countries are, the innovative and clever ideas that they have to overcome these obstacles and um, looking forward to all the great trials <laughs> coming over into industry one day. We, we need more ideas and, and big brains, so um, yeah, excited about new people. Yeah. I, I think students, if you are watching, I think your parents most probably think, yeah, I wish I was a little bit younger, I wish I can still do this. But I think what I get from what Jean is saying is that there are just so many opportunities and they are exciting and they are out there and you must just grab them and go for them. So I know right now you battle with physics and mathematics um, and you're going to battle with that at university level as well. <laughs> But you're going to pass it, you're going to make it, and then there's going to be so, so many opportunities for you. Jean, any last words for our grade 12s or for the parents, perhaps, you know? Um, what should they do or not do or um, any advice? I think choose wisely and um, don't choose a course or a direction just because you think it's going to make you rich one day or be, because you maybe think it's an easy direction. Um, so choose something which you're passionate about and something which really interests you and I think the, the success will come automatically and at the end of the day it is a big privilege um, to be able to study at the university or at any university and people should really make the most of that opportunity and um, of course have fun responsibly <laughs> um, but work hard and um, remember at the end of the day you only get one shot at this, so, so, so to make the most of their time here at university and focus on the contribution to industry one day as well. Fantastic. I hope that you are excited. Yeah, it sounds so exciting to me. So let us show you, thank you, John, and let us show you um, just a video on what you can expect. Where will you study? How it's going to look at Stellenbosch University when you come next year in 2024? Welcome to our lab.
now you've seen where you're going to study and now I'm going to introduce you to some of your lecturers. Um, for those that perhaps have only joined us now, I just want to say Marty's 101 is an event that we host for prospective students and their parents. We want to answer your questions. We want to address issues that we think that you might wonder or are worried about. And you're more than welcome at any time to WhatsApp us your questions. Um, the, uh, the number will appear on the screen and then you can just send the WhatsApp and our faculty administrator is ready to answer those questions. If you do watch this as a recording a little bit later, then you're more than welcome just to send your question via email to us a Greek at sun.ac.za. But in the studio with me is two of our lecturers. They are definitely far more used to standing in front of a crowd and talk and address them. So I think that they might be far more comfortable than I am in this seat. And that's Arna Blankert and Estelle Kempen. They've both got their doctorates at Stellenbosch. And I think um, let's start with Estelle. Estelle, you are a lecturer within agronomy. Um, I know that you've also got a very long industry history where you work for um, a very big retailer. But first tell us, what is agronomy all about? What is it? Yeah, thanks, Monica. Um, so basically, uh, agronomy is, a, is about growing things. Um, so it's about growing crops uh, for food, for fuel, um, for fodder. Um, and also you know, how these crops interact with nature. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, it's almost like playing, playing a game. How can we do it better and, and win those big scores and getting um, better yields and, and better quality um, products? Um, yeah, so w the crops that we focus on here at Salambosch in agronomy is, is b both your open field crops like um, wheat and canola, but we also do um, greenhouse crops. So we don't even use any soil and we grow them in greenhouses um, where we can play around with the climate and nutrition um, and all kinds of uh, nice toys that we use to do that. It almost uh, reminds me now of what John said, where she said about the cool stuff that she's working with. And here a lecturer also says that in her <laughs> daytime job, she's playing around with cool stuff. Can I just ask you, what type of student would typically go and study agronomy? Or what type of, what traits or personality um, would look into a field like that? I think, yeah, obviously, first of all, you need to love nature um, and you need to, to uh, like to be outdoors, although we not, don't spend all of our time outdoors. A lot of it is spending inside reading as well, which is also nice. But you need to have, you need to have patience. Um, you need to be resilient. Uh, the crops don't always behave as you, you would like them to behave. And, you know, you, we, can't, we still can't um, predict, never mind change mm -hmm. the weather. Um, so you need to have that tenacity as well. And you need to be a problem solver. It's all about, it's uh, solving puzzles all day. That's mm. what we do. Yeah, and, and you use science to solve those puzzles. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Mm. So you need science and you need those building blocks, um, your math skills, your, your chemistry, physics, all of that to be able to solve these puzzles of how do we, how do we get this specific crop um, to do what we would like them to do. Mm. Um, Erna, you being in viticulture and oenology, that is, I would assume, similar for the type of students that you draw? Um, yes, definitely, Monica. Um, students should have a very sound base of mathematics and sciences, and that actually helps you to answer all the questions in, in the vineyard, in the cellar, when you pump a wine, um, but mostly understanding grapevine physiology, why the plant grows in a specific way. And of course, we're facing climate change. Climate change is a major factor. Um, so you have to adapt also what we do on a daily basis uh, on the science side. Do all the students that go and study viticulture and oenology become winemakers? No, definitely not. It, although it's a dual degree, so you can become a winemaker. However, the market is saturated. Um, and just this afternoon, I had a discussion. There's, there are currently only three technical people in table grapes. So table grapes is also a, another aspect or a commodity that you can farm besides wine grapes. So gra viticulture is the study of grape cultivation and harvesting of the fruit. So all the processes that are involved throughout the entire um, year, uh, the fertilizers, water, the irrigation, uh, pest management, um, and of course, on the table grape side, also you want those big, uh, nice, crunchy berries for the market. Um, but Anna, you can also take, um, for instance, wine and grape sciences um, within, say, with agricultural economics. 
and with horticulture or um, these, these other programs, you don't only have to go into viticulture and oenology, is that correct? That's correct, Monica. You can also do, like you say, economics, uh, uh, viticulture and plant uh, soil sciences as well as plant pathology. There is a very scarce skills for technical people and know-how of even plant diseases in South Africa. So there's definitely lots of job opportunities, not only in South Africa, but also internationally. I think um, for everybody listening and perhaps not knowing, um, our faculty administrator might alert you to it that we've got a, a faculty calendar, an Afrikaans nummers at the yardbook, and there it gives you a detailed breakdown of what subjects you take in which year and what combinations of subjects that you can do. But what they all have in common is that you do chemistry and you do physics and you do mathematics. Um, and you do biology in your first year. Um, and from there, you, later on, you start branching off. Slight changes if you do perhaps agricultural economics, or if you do, for instance, wood and wood product sciences, because there you sit with classes with the engineering students. But I think science is, is the basis for, for, for all of that. Um, Estelle, um, job opportunities, where do students generally go to work? Do they find employment, easily employment? What, it, what is your... Um... So our students are in, in great demand, not, uh, not only locally, mm. um, but also internationally. Um, and they work, it's everything from, from research to farming um, to all the input suppliers. So all the companies that's related to agriculture, your seed companies, your fertilizer companies, um, a big, a big industry developing at this moment is alternatives to, for instance, the, the chemicals that's being used. So how can we use, um, you know, integrated pest management? So all of these companies um, employ agronomists. Um, even you know companies that starting with with data science and linking linking that um, with growing mm -hmm. crops. Um, the mm -hmm. basis of that is still your agronomist that needs to know the crop mm -hmm. and how it interacts with the environment. Mm -hmm. So, so it's definitely um, the the cost. Who um, seems that known English? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, it is worth your while to invest in your education and into a degree Absolutely. that might be costly. I think, Arna, perhaps I just want to touch on on that. Um, is there specific bursaries um, for students wanting to go and study viticulture and oenology? I know that is on the priority list for the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development. Uh, yes, there are bursaries available, Monica. Um, the students can visit the website and the closing date is at the 31st of October. Um, the, the university also has a um, website and also a yearbook where you can actually uh, search for specific bursaries. Um, you just need to complete the forms and get it in on time and get all the documentation um, and complete the forms as complete as possible and don't mm -hmm. miss any have any missing pieces there because of course if it's incomplete your application won't uh, be uh, reviewed. Yeah. Adna, I, I want to ask and I hope you don't mind me asking it but but you were the first um, female student who, of colour who obtained a PhD in 2015 from Stellenbosch University. Um, I assume that it was also a rough road for you or not, not a too easy route. Um, are there any advice that, that you want to give to, to students, you know, um, about this journey that they're going to embark on? I think um, life in general is difficult. Um, I think our students, our undergrad students alluded to that earlier, how tough it is when you come to Stellenbosch, a new environment, um, new spaces, um, also a new, completely new structure that you need to understand, and also finding yourself, not having your parents close by. Um, I think hard work pays off, uh, go and speak to your lecturers, it's something that I normally tell my students, don't suffer in silence, just put up your hand and go to the academic and, and tell them I have a problem with A, B, C, D. I think it's so important if you, if you also the student, the academic will normally see that the student is really interested and the student really wants to learn. Um, it's, it's not an easy journey. Um, I think uh, for a number of reasons it's a male dominated field, but if you have passion and you're really determined and tenacious and you've got grit um, and you love the outdoors um, because it's not easy every day, but the fun thing is that I get to change my office three, four times depending on the time of the year and that's what makes it, uh, what, 
what I absolutely love about this field. Awesome. Estelle, one last question to you is, you've, you've been in industry um, for quite some time. Do you think that Stellenbosch prepared you for industry? Do you think our students um, are good at what they are being taught, that they can actually use that? And also coming back to academia, um, yeah, any, any advice also from what you've learned in industry that, that, that students can benefit from? Yeah, definitely. I think our, our students are yeah, some of the best in industry and um, you know, even now me being back in, in academia, I get um, from my previous colleagues daily calls almost, we want some more students, we need some more graduates, um, do you have anybody available? Um, so we definitely prepare them. And I think having spent time in industry and back in academia, the, I think we've always been very good at the academic side. Um, and um, the side that we are now putting a little bit more attention on also is um, you know, preparing them for life in the workplace. Um, you know, the, it's, it's fast paced in, in, in a, a corporate world. You need to be able to have good communication skills and all of those things. So we also interview into our into our academic program, which makes it really, really worthwhile. Oh, awesome. It's wonderful to hear that our students are sought after. And for those that don't know that Stellenbosch University is the best university on the African continent for agricultural sciences studies or for agricultural studies. And we're also on the top 100 worldwide. Um, it's impossible for us to, to talk with every lecturer and about every uh, program that we offer. Uh, we're going to quickly show you an overview, a short overview of the faculty.
and indeed your journey starts at Stellenbosch University. Now that, with that video, if you perhaps have seen something now that you don't, um, that you didn't know of or that you think, wow, that sounds exciting or something that is Stella said or Jean has said, I've got Eric van Sale, our faculty administrator with us. He's working behind the scenes very, very hard. Eric, I want to know if any student sitting now here tonight and think, I have to change my program. Can they still do that within our faculty? Hi, Monica. Thank you for having me. Yes, they can still change their programs. They just need to contact me directly and send me an email to eric at sun.ac.za and request that specific program change and we can look at if there's space available in the program to possibly change you over as well as meeting the minimum requirements for that specific program. Okay, um, Eric if there's a student now watching that um, that got an offer from the university because they've applied but they totally forgot to accept it or they ran out of time or whatever or after tonight they just know they had to accept it what now? Again, just please email me as soon as you can and then we can look at reissuing that offer to you um, so that you are able to accept it. I didn't tell you that he's actually the most important person in the faculty, you know, because, <laughs> because he's working behind the scenes. You need to know him. That Eric that he's saying is Eric is E-R-I-K at sun.ac.za. Eric, and if there's a student now um, that did not get an offer or did not meet the minimum requirements, is there any chance that they can be reconsidered uh, based on improved metric results? So if they meet their minimum requirements on their final grade 12 results, then please do contact me as well again. There will be a link available where you can request reconsideration. So that reconsideration can be for our mainstream programs or our extended degree programs. So please do get in contact with us if you haven't met the minimum requirements, but do meet it in your final grade 12 results. Yeah, so I think what is important to know is that um, I think Hannes has said that in the beginning as well, that hard work really um, is, Ooh, now I forgot what he said, but he said that hard work really is, is well worth your while and it will be if you work hard and improve your marks and get the right marks in order to, to study at the university. Um, so students, have, um, as far as I understand, they've received now an offer and um, they've accepted the offer or they will immediately accept it after emailing you. What are the next steps? Um, is everything in order? Are they going to get more notices from the university? Do they have to do something? Can you perhaps just give us a rundown of, of what happens from here onwards? So if you're currently grade 12, the most important thing you have to do is focus on your grade 12 exams because that is going to determine if you get that final offer to be able to register in your program. During our December months, you will receive information regarding our orientation week and the registration process and then so it's very important i think monica has addressed that before that you have to attend that orientation week where the faculty will support you there will be assistance to guide you on how to navigate campus and classes and then during that period of time we will also register you and then on the 12th of february your classes will start and you will start your journey at stellenbosch Okay, so yes, very important what Erica said, even though that classes start on the 12th of February, we usually have an orientation or a welcoming program. It's compulsory for students to attend because during that welcoming pro program, what we do is we introduce you to the faculty, to the program, um, to various elements, environments. We also show you the electronic platform that students have to use, where you're going to get your timetable from, your exam timetable, we call it SunLearn. You get introduced to all the support services that the university offers. Um, so on an academic side, we really orientate and introduce you to everything that we offer on campus, but also on the social side, the residences and the private student organization or the private wards, they they introduce you to some of the fun stuff, the lacquer stuff that you will also do. They, they will really make you tired. Um, but so that is compulsory and you will get notified by that. Um, one other thing perhaps that's just from my side to remind students is that, or to tell students, is that within the next week we will launch a telegram group. It is for all prospective students. Um, 
please join that group because that group you can ask your questions we will send you more information um, you will get to know some of your your um, fellow students already in the class so there's going to be a lot of interaction and I really want to um, encourage you to uh, to join that telegram group obviously it's um, not compulsory but you are going to miss out on a lot of information Eric um, perhaps just a final question from my side uh, is there anything that students have to prepare themselves for for registration what can they do what must they do other than now the matric that they have to focus on so there's not much more to do if you meet those final minimum requirements mm -hmm. on your final grade 12 results you will then receive that final offer and you will be able to register online so from here on out the process would be very easy and quick but if you struggle at any point there is a client services I will be available, Monica will be available, so there will always be assistance to guide you through the process. But I, did th I do think that you reminded me that, um, that if you forget, I should remind you <laughs> that students must look at the calendar, the yearbook. Correct, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just remind them? <laughs> so, especially um, if you a first year student, they, you can find all the faculty's calendars, but specifically Ivory Sciences as, as well, on www.sun.ac.za forward slash calendar. There you will find the program outline for each and every program, your subjects, and how your program for your dura duration of your studies will look like, um, so that you can see which modules are very, very important that you must focus all your attention on so that you don't fail those modules, as that might potentially impact modules to come in the future. Um, so it will give you a, a good overview of how your program will look during your studies at Stellenbosch. I think Eric has now alluded to something. He spoke about modules. At the university, we've got different terminology, even though that I'm talking about subjects, because I know that's a familiar word for you. At university, we refer to it as modules. So um, we've come to the end of our program or of our conversation with different staff members that we have. Um, I think final words perhaps from my side is that um, I know it might sound daunting. Um, I know that you might be fearful or that, that you're worried about certain things. But you can really rest assured that the staff at the Faculty of Agri-Sciences, that we are here to help you and to assist you, that you can ask any question for, for us and, and we will try and help you. Uh, we are a friendly bunch of people. We are warm and we are inviting um, and we really want you on campus and we look forward in greeting you um, yeah, in 2024. From my side and from Eric's side, from our faculty administrator, thank you very much for joining us. For those that um, watch this as a recording, remember that you can send in your uh, questions to agrik at sun.ac.za or you can always send it to Eric at sun.ac.za and we are here to help. Uh, we're going to end off with just a short video clip. Thank you. Welcome to Stellenbosch University. Welcome to Stellenbosch. Welcome to AgriSciences. It is a tough year, but you just need to, to keep on going forward and push through. If you're struggling in matric right now, please remember that Stellenbosch is a world-class university. So you do need to work hard to get here, but it will all be worth it because the qualification that you will leave with, you will be endowed with all the necessary skills and you'll come out with a qualification that can take you all around the globe. Just keep on keeping on. If you think things are looking a little bit down now, keep on giving your best because opportunities arise. It's hard now, but it's worth it in the end. I mean, you get to come to a place like this. What more could you ask for? This is once in a lifetime opportunity for you to get into a good university, a world class university that has got world class lecturers. So work hard, stay focused, make sure that you've got a good circle around you, people that motivate you on a daily basis so that you can actually achieve your goals. For someone who is a few months left but really struggling, you've made it this far. So please just push for that last bit, that last bit, and I'm telling you, you will make it. I have your eyes on, on the end prize and I think coming to university is definitely going to be the best time of your life. Keep on pushing through. In a few months you'll be able to join us here on the beautiful campus of Stellenbosch.